I invite the congregation to please stand and face the processional cross. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. risen Hallelujah. The Lord is our strength and our song and has become our salvation. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. and 
Lord be with you. Please join me as we pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. The first reading is from Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every, but in every <clears throat> excuse me, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went out, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets, te all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let's read responsively Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing, salvation, echoing the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts godly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me solely, but he did not hand me over to, the, to death. <clears throat> Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. My God, the Lord, as this has been done, it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. And then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, 
though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we, rec so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the empty tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of, their, of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Christ has triumphed. He is living. Alleluia. I invite the congregation to be seated, and at this time I'd like to invite our children forward for the children's message. Good morning. How are you? You give me five? All right. Kimbo, how are you doing? All right, I got a special surprise for you guys. Do you know what they call Jesus? They call Jesus the Lamb of God. And here is Precious from Scattered Joy Acres, one month old. What if I were to tell you that, isn't, isn't she cute? What if I were to tell you you can't touch her? What would you say? That wouldn't be very good, would it? You can go ahead and pet her. Go ahead and pet her. That's Precious. She's one month old. She's a young lamb, and young lambs, and she's very curious. She's very curious, very excited. Easter's kind of like that, isn't it? We get pretty excited. We're excited because of new things. What, do you, what is so new about Easter? Do you know who's new? What happened to Jesus three days ago on the cross? Jesus what? He died. And then on the third day, what happened? He rose, he, rose again. he rose again. And he came and he shares the message that, oh, here we go. The message of new life. And this is new life right here, a baby lamb. And you want to touch the lamb. You can go ahead and pet her again. She likes it when you pet her. And that's kind of like Easter, right? We don't want to put Easter, just hear the story and then keep the story at arm's length, do we? We want to be touched by the story. We want to interact with the story. We want to believe that Jesus is not just risen again some 2,000 years ago, but is alive with us now and is giving us the message and promise of new birth. And so Precious came here to help share the message with you today that Christ is alive that Christ is born again, that Christ lives and is loose in our world and loves you guys so much. You see how much Precious is looking at you guys? Like, I really, really like you guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Precious, and then we have some baby chicks that I believe are back there. 
They will be available for you between services so you can interact and play with them. I want to say thanks uh, to Dean uh, for bringing Precious here today from Scattered Joy Acres uh, and for helping us share the message of the risen Lord. What's that, buddy? Let's have a prayer. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks that you are our lamb, the lamb who uh, comes into our lives to share with us how much you love us. On this Easter day, as we celebrate the risen Lord, as we celebrate the promise that you are risen for our lives, help us to not just hear the story, but to interact, to be hands-on as you are in our world. We ask your blessings upon these children and upon our families here today. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. Get in there, Walter. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose from the dead on Easter morning, He awoke to the beginning of a brand new world. A brand new world that we are gathered in here today. It's a world that God had always intended to create. And what this means is that because Jesus is risen, that we are promised to rise with Him again as well. That this promise is for us. It's a hands-on promise, as we shared in our children's message here today. It's a promise that sin and death no longer have dominion over us in this world. That a new creation has been born. Perhaps there are some on this glorious day, however, that still have questions about what it means that Jesus has been set loose in the world. What exactly does that mean for your life and for the world around us? And maybe there are still some of us uh, among us and among those who are worshiping here and other churches around our world who are still curious about what this resurrection business means anyway. And for those of us who still are asking questions or still are wondering or wandering in our lives of faith about this Easter story, you are in good company in today's Gospel from St. Mark. This morning we gather in the hope of the resurrection, but the Easter story didn't immediately begin in such a way. The witnesses to the empty tomb encountered Easter in one of the most, I think, authentic human ways possible, with fear. It wasn't an all-out panic, exactly. It wasn't one of those kinds of fears. But there is some human, human honesty, I think, about what happened at that scene of the empty tomb. It begins with the anxiousness of these Three women who went to the tomb to anoint Jesus who they thought was dead. Now mind you, these women probably were no different than any one of us who try as hard as we can to be prepared to expect certain outcomes to control what happens. Of course, these women had all of the preparations that they would need to anoint Jesus' body, to wipe away the smear of the cross, to anoint Him with precious myrrh. And yet, those three witnesses were anxious, weren't they? Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? They worried amongst themselves as they walked towards that scene. And as they approached the tomb, their anxiety only did what? It only increased as they saw that the stone indeed was not there, that it had been rolled away to the side. And the tomb was empty. As they entered, they were aghast as they saw a young man dressed in white, only adding to the sense of alarm that they must have felt you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, he says, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here, the young man says. Look over there. That is the place where they laid him. 
The last chance that these must have been going through their mind was this is the last chance that we had to show any compassion to the broken body of our Lord and our teacher. And now the plot had already, had already grown thicker. The mystery had gotten stranger. The fear even more intense. And as Mark concludes his story in the Gospel, the women, they didn't just walk away casually, they fled for fear and terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. This is not only how the Easter story ends in Mark's Gospel, it's essentially the ending of his Gospel altogether. That's how Mark chooses to end this greatest story we've ever heard. It begins with his gospel by saying this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But it concludes with an honest emotion of human fear relative to what had just happened. And so now as we gather once again in our finest to cheer and say our alleluias, to exclaim Christ is risen, He is risen indeed, how could it be that those very first witnesses to the empty tomb were so afraid. What, pray tell, were they afraid of? Did they fear the message from the young man might have been a lie? Did they fear that the Roman guard perhaps was playing a mean trick on them? Or maybe the fear the women experienced about this crazy story about Jesus was actually true. And they didn't exactly know how to process it in their own mind. He has been raised, how could that actually stir up any sort of fear at all? Well, to answer that question, maybe we should examine our own lives on this Easter morning. Maybe some of us are afraid that after all of the glory and the hope and the alleluias that are exclaimed this day and the excitement is over, that we'll go on to regular normal life, whatever that means, the status quo to be ready for a world that doesn't end, that continues to go on tomorrow. And I surely, as your pastor, pray that none of us feel that way, only to feel like nothing has changed with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that God has come to do something amazing and mighty in our world. But what I do hope for you, and hear me say this, is that I hope that you still are just a little bit afraid a little bit of uneasiness that you might experience about the possibility that the risen Lord is on the loose and that He promises to meet you this very day. Be afraid. Be very afraid. As one preacher put it, perhaps Easter is the morning that the living God will grab us by the scruff of our souls to propel us into some wild scheme. I kind of like that because for some of us, that is scary. It's scary because it might mean that Jesus might demand something of you once we faithfully exclaim those words, He is risen indeed. Easter is scary because believing in the risen Lord also means that Jesus is on the loose and might somehow mess with this world and your way of life. Easter's scary because sometimes I think we want Jesus to stay where He belongs. We don't want to be challenged to love the neighbor that we don't care for. We don't want to tear down the walls that we feel keep us safe. We don't want to break down the barriers of injustice or welcome the stranger in our midst all of the time, do we? And sometimes we don't know how. The risen Lord is scary because His promises demand that we see the world through the lens and love of God's kingdom, not the prejudiced eyes of our own. Easter is scary because it forces us to come out of our neat little comfortable corners of life to follow a God who is on the loose in a very messy place. I think this is why Easter 
is terrifying, albeit in a wonderfully and frightening new way. Because if you came here this morning to exclaim that Christ is risen, He is risen indeed, you also have to be ready to hear another truth. That the world has been turned on its head by the power of a God of love through Jesus Christ. And the party is just getting started. According to the story of his life, a 19th century Hungarian composer, Franz Liszt, had an unusual way of beginning his morning each day. You might say that the composer wasn't a morning person. So his clever wife, in order to get him up each day, lured him out of bed in the morning by playing the first seven notes of a scale on their piano downstairs. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. And then she'd go back to the kitchen and finish preparing her breakfast. Well, poor Franz knew better about that scale. He knew that it wasn't complete. And as hard as he tried to ignore the omission, finally he had to force himself to throw back on his robe, go downstairs, and play the final note, Do! Strangely, that's what got him going, to play the next note. And perhaps many of us can relate. After all, an unfinished work cannot stand. Unfinished business demands something of us as well. It stirs us from our slumber. It invites us to resolve what is incomplete. And this is where I'm finally at with the message of Easter this morning, especially as Mark tells it in his Gospel. Because Easter and the story of Easter doesn't end with some neat and tidy bow tied up on top with fuzzy bunnies and some chocolate eggs and call it a day. We're good. In fact, Easter doesn't even actually end at all, does it? Yes, the promise of the resurrection is powerfully final. This much is true. And wonderfully yours to keep for eternity. That much is true. But the work of telling the story in this world has just begun. There is still unfinished business. There are more notes to play. And it's urgently calling each one of you and me from our slumber to play it here now. To go and to tell as that young man, that angel commands, to tell the world and all of the world that Jesus is not dead, that He is risen. Remember, God isn't desperate. In the story, we hear this. God isn't desperate for the perfect person or the perfect believer to tell His story. God is urgently yearning for people like you and for me to tell that story. People that, of course, are full of our own worries, our own doubts, our own struggles, our own imperfections. People just like you and me to be witnesses to that glorious and mysteriously empty tomb. Knowing and believing finally that the risen and gracious Lord meets us on our way. Amen.
Jesus the vine, we are the branches, life in the spirit, the fruit of the tree, heaven to earth, Christ to the people, gift of the future now flowing to me. Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory, hallelujah. Weeping be Please join me as we confess our faith together through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, for the world, and all of those in need of good news this day. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, your church where the church is persecuted, protect it, where the church is privileged, grant it humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to empower Christ's love in the world, God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace. Merciful Lord, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, or abuse. Teach leaders the way of your justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. We pray for war-torn regions around our world that peace and love might prevail. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for this good news we hear today. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people who are struggling to make it through each day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith. We pray for those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit this day. We pray for Ray and Mike, Donna, for Kim, Luann, for Sandy and Elaine, 
for Neil, for Bev, Emily, for Campbell, for Laurel. We pray for Pastor Kent and Don, Nick. Pray for John and Mary. And Lord, we lift up to you the loved ones who we name in our own hearts this day. We pray for your spirit in our midst to comfort and heal. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us now with your wisdom that we may go and serve and care for others in need. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your Easter promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion each day. God of grace. And to your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share that peace with one another. Take the world, but give me Jesus. All its joy is just a name. For his love abideth ever through eternal years. 
the same Oh, the height and depth of mercy Oh, the length and breadth of love Oh, the fullness of redemption Pledge of endless life Take the world, but give me Jesus. In his cross, my trust shall be. Till with clearer or brighter vision, face to face, my Lord, I see. Oh, the height and depth of mercy. Oh, the length and breadth of love Oh, the fullness of redemption Pledge of endless life above Pledge of endless life above Take the world but give me Jesus. Charity and love prevail, their God is ever found, brought here together by Christ's love, by love we thus are bound, with grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn, let us with heart and mind and soul. Let us pray. Risen One, you call us to believe and to bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer now here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's table has been prepared and all are invited. Please follow our usher's instructions this morning. Be seated, please.
I invite the congregation to please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go now in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.